What's up, you guys? Evan Twyford here. Uh, I wanted to put together a quick demo showing you how we can use Adobe Illustrator and the blend function to create a series of shapes and a series of frames uh, that we can export and load into Memory Palace to start to get these types of morphing uh, animation loops. Uh, the loop on the left is sort of the dry signal out of Memory Palace and you can see the morph uh, between a parallelogram shape and an oval shape and then back again. And then the example on the right is the exact same loop uh, but with additional motion uh, programmed in Memory Palace as well as some color mixing and some uh, uh, edge filtering done externally. So I'll show you how to set up the files in Illustrator and show you how easy it can be to export this stuff uh, and create it pretty quickly. All right, so I've got Illustrator open and part of what's going to make this process more streamlined is how we set up the document at the very beginning. So let me show you how we do that. We'll go to File, New, uh, and you can put a name in here if you like. Um, and the first thing we see under profile here is the number of artboards. And so for us, that's going to be the number of frames in our animation. So that can be whatever you want. Um, I like to use an odd number. So that way we get one uh, keyframe right in the center that we can blend to. Um, and we'll have an equal number of frames on either side of that. So we can use the same blend function uh, twice. Um, and I'll show you why that's valuable uh, uh, here in a minute. So. The next thing you want to do is, is make sure that you arrange the artboards either by row or by column. And that doesn't really matter either way, but you don't want it to be uh, in this grid pattern. You want it to be this row uh, or column here. So I'll check row. Uh, spacing can be whatever you want. It's going to space them automatically. Uh, and then for size, we'll do custom. And I already have the values in here, but you know this is just going to be our standard uh, image loading for Memory Palace. So 720. Uh, by 480. Uh, make sure that's pixels and you can choose your units over here, pixels down here at the bottom. Make sure you've got the horizontal orientation which should be automatic based on the uh, the uh, dimensions here and that is going to be it. So you can click OK and when our document opens it's going to look something like this. So as you can see we've got all 21 artboards arranged in one long row. Um, and so I'm not going to go over every tool in Illustrator. Uh, there are plenty of tutorials online about that stuff, but I can give you a quick overview on you know, the few things that we're going to be using here. So over here on your right, uh, if it's not in this uh, sort of menu, this drop down menu on the side, there's a little layers tab. It looks like two little pieces of paper. Um, and uh, if that's not there, you can go up to window and go down to layers and click that to open up this layers tab. Um, and that's got layers on one tab here and then artboards as well so you can see all 21 of our artboards uh, if you click on each one i don't know if you can see it but it'll sort of highlight it with a little black line um, <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is i'm going to put a black background uh, for all of our layers uh, so that that way we've got the black uh, background that we can key out when we get it back into uh, memory palace so uh, I'm going to show you how to use this blend tool uh, that we're going to use to make our shapes. Uh, and I'm going to do that first just by using it to create all of these uh, backgrounds instead of having to do them one by one. Uh, so I'll go up here and select my little rectangle tool so I can make a black rectangle. And I will zoom in um, and set your colors so that the rectangle it has a black fill and then no outline. Um, black rectangle and I've got my guides set here so that it kind of snaps to the corners uh, if you don't have that setting you can go up here to view and then go down to smart guides and, and click that so that'll give you these little uh, guides that you can snap to so that automatically snaps to the corners uh, there's my black rectangle uh, and rather than like I said rather than sitting here and copy pasting them on every single artboard like that it's a little bit tedious I'll show you how to use the blend tool uh, first and then we'll use it to make some different shapes other than just a rectangle. So uh, to do that for all of these artboards I'm going to copy paste this rectangle. Uh, Control C, move over to my last artboard, 
control V and then I can snap it in place <clears throat> and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a blend between these two rectangles and it'll create 25 steps and since they're both the same shape they'll just all be the same so um, to do a blend function you go up here uh, to object and you go down here to blend and before we can make the blend we need to set the options correctly so uh, go to blend options uh, there are a couple different options here smooth color is going to give you like a single shape that's sort of a gradient bl uh, blended color uh, but we want specified steps so what that does is it creates a series of shapes in between our two shapes uh, to blend the two shapes together uh, or to morph them uh, sort of into one another so for this one uh, we've got 21 frames total subtract the two on the ends so we've got 19 in between so we'll put 19 in here uh, click OK and then to make the blend you just select both uh, make sure you're using your uh, selection tool the black arrow select both and you go back up to object again blend and then make or as you can see here the shortcuts alt control B so I'll just do alt control B and bam uh, filled in all these little rectangles individually on all of our artboards so now every artboard has a black background um, and you can see it's all one object now it's sort of grouped so to ungroup this you have to do two things you have to go up here to uh, object again and hit expand and then it gives you the option to expand the fill or the object we're just going to do both and hit OK uh, and now it's individual vectors but they're still grouped so we want to ungroup them we'll just do a right click ungroup and now as you can see there are individual black squares everywhere all right so we're going to keep all those on one background or on uh, one layer so that way we can't mess with them we're just going to lock that layer so i'm going to hit this little tab right here next to the eyeball and that's going to lock it you can see the little lock there uh, and let's create a new layer on top of that and now you know no matter what we do here we draw some pictures some shapes we can't mess with that black background um, all right, so now let's uh, let's draw a couple of shapes that we want to uh, blend between. I'm going to use the same ones in our uh, initial example. So we'll do like a blend between, uh, let's start with that parallelogram shape. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in here on my first artboard. Uh, we'll do a parallelogram. So I'm going to start with a rectangle for my parallelogram. I can draw that here. And you can see it's still the black that we specified before. So I'll change the fill to a white and move that and center and with your smart guides on you should be able to snap it to the center uh, of the artboard you see how it has that little intersect uh, indicator in there um, and then to, to sort of skew it you can do a number of things but I'm going to use this white arrow which is the direct selection tool and just grab the top edge of that vector and move it to the side here I mean, you could, you know, do whatever. I'm assuming you guys will use your own shapes here. Uh, and then again, this, we still have a center mark on our vector here, so we can center it. Uh, and there you go. So that's our first shape. Then let's draw, we'll go ahead and draw the shape that we're going to blend it to. Uh, so I'll go up here to Rectangle Tool and hold down uh, and select the Ellipse Tool instead. Um, and I can use these smart guides to shape it or to size it exactly the same uh, sort of size or the same overall height as our parallelogram. So I'll just drag that here, snap it, and we've got our little uh, our little oval right here ready to go. Um, and so I mentioned before having a center keyframe, um, which will be that that perfect center frame and then we'll do so we'll blend to that and then we'll blend back to the original parallelogram shape so that way we get a perfect loop uh, with our animation uh, frames right so let me zoom out a little bit I will copy and paste this uh, parallelogram shape so I can control C control V and then just drag it over here to our very last frame and again, if you want it to be a perfect loop, we have to make sure that it's centered and snapped to that center. Uh, there are a number of ways you could register it if you're doing something that's off-center. You know, you could create a little shape uh, that could snap to the corner as like a reference 
like a positional reference of where it would go. Um, and then we want to put that uh, that little oval shape on the center one. So if we've got 21 frames total, then our center will be number 10. Um, so we'll do, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Snap it to the center. And just to verify, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I messed it up. I think we want nine in between each one. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. So we've got nine blank frames in between each one. And, and again, the reason I specified that is when we go up here to our uh, blend settings again, and we're going to change it to nine steps. So that way we don't have to keep redoing this based on how many frames are in between. We can just do the same blend function uh, two times. Uh, so click OK. Uh, and let's try it with these first two shapes. We'll select them. Control Alt B. Blend. And you can see all those cool little steps there in between. Uh, it sort of does this morph animation. And then we're going to do the same thing to blend this shape back into the very final frame. However, um, if you remember when we did the first blend, you see how this is all one object now. So we need to do the same thing we did before. We select that and we go to Object uh, Expand. Uh, object and Fill is OK. And now you can see the individual uh, vector outlines. And one more time, we click that vector and we ungroup it. Uh, and now we'll have the individual uh, vectors there. So that will allow us to select just this vector and blend that into our uh, other parallelogram here. So let's try that. Control Alt B and bam, good to go. So just to be safe, let's go ahead and expand and ungroup that uh, blend as well. And now we can see we can select each of these individually. Cool. Um, so you can do all kinds of other weird things with this. Um, you know, we could do multiple blends or multiple sort of morphs or shape animations um, by splitting them into, you know, even more sections of, uh, of uh, frames. So we could do a lo much longer frame animation and then do, you know, multiple uh, blends of maybe five or, or ten or however many you want uh, frames in between. You can also do a color change as well. So if you want to just look and see what that looks like real quick. Uh, let's do a, we'll do like a pink one, and then let's do, uh, what are we going to do? Why is this not working? Oh, um, let's try like a triangle. You can go to your polygon tool, and we'll click three sides, click OK, and boom. And let's put that in a different color, and let's see what it looks like when we blend between different colors. <clears throat> All right, select both of those, Control Alt B, and there you can see uh, the nice color transition too, which is pretty cool. Um, now, this is all one object right here, again, uh, until we expand it, and you can see our spacing is not perfect right here, but let's um, let me make this smaller and I can just show you what I'm thinking. Um, if you want to if you want to modify just one, it will do a live update, which is pretty cool. Uh, but to do that, you have to use that uh, the selection tool, the, the black arrow, and to move just that individual shape, you double click on this object, and then you can pull these out separately. So I'm going to space those out just so I can see what's going on. Uh, and then double click to get back out of that. Um, you can use this white direct selection tool to modify just the vector itself. So uh, on this vector, say I could um, select these corners and oh, let's just do one of them. And it's got like a little radius uh, uh, control handle right here, that little dot. So I could pull that and do a little radius corner. Um, and you see how it does the live update, which is pretty cool. So you can mess around with some shapes in here. You can use the pen tool and draw some vectors and just kind of go crazy and, and it gives you that that cool update of what's happening so you can kind of freestyle it and do some cool stuff in here pretty quickly so anyway that's about it um, again there's a whole ton of other features here in Illustrator that are really fun to get into but I wanted to kind of keep it simple here uh, let's delete that um, the last step 
is obviously saving all these out. And, and the cool thing about having all these artboards set up is you can just export them all. We already have them sized the way we want them. Uh, and they'll be good to go and load into Memory Palace. So what I'll do for that is go to File, Export. Don't do Save, do Export. And let's look at these, uh, these options. We've got the file name, Morph A. So it's probably going to be called Morph A, and then it's going to have the number uh, dashes after it, depending on which frame it is. Uh, and instead of saying just JPEG here, we'll say use artboards. Uh, we are going to export as JPEG, but we want to use artboards and we'll do all. And we'll just hit export. And then it'll give you this dialog box uh, where you can sort of choose uh, what quality you want. So make sure that we do a 72 PPI uh, because if you do the 300 uh, or 150, I believe, It'll give us a larger image size than we want. So we just want the 720 by 480 at 72 DPI. You can leave the quality at maximum up here. Uh, click OK. Uh, and then if we zero out of here and go to our Morph 1 folder right here, you'll see all of our frames ready to go already in the folder. And you can just load that right into Memory Palace. So uh, let me know if you guys have any questions on this stuff. Uh, I'm excited to see what you all make with this. So, you know, tag me in your masterpieces. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later.